Okay, so for the first topic that we're going to discuss this semester is dealing with multiple different little things. We're going to be dealing with order of operations, simplifying both algebraic and numerical expressions, set building and interval notation, and absolute value. So first thing, order of operations. This is something we you've been taught since elementary and middle school. Um, this is showing from a non-calculator perspective. You can do these a lot of these operations all in your calculator. This is shown and being broken down simplistically from a non-calculator perspective in case you come across something where you are you have to do it non-calculator or your calculator or electronics die on you. So remember we follow PEMDAS, which means parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Some of y'all may have heard this as please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So parentheses, this means grouping, so stuff that are grouped together. Um, when you see expressions in a numerator, denominator, in parentheses, in brackets, or in the exponent or underneath a radical. That's what this is saying here. Let's, let's change roots to radical. I like that better. I like that term better. Okay. Exponent. So remember with this, this means you have a base number and then your exponent is this little piece diagonally above it. Okay. And so with here, what this is saying is if you have something like 3 squared, well, you're going to do 3 times 3 to get 9. Now, multiply, divide, you do from left to right. This is where it trips up a lot of us students. Trust me, I've had this happen to me. Um, on Facebook, you always see these little challenges of you've got this long numerical expression, you're asked to simplify it. And it's because of PEMDAS where a lot of us, and I raised my hand because I was guilty of it, make an error. Add and subtract, same thing. You add from left to right. Okay, so order of operations is not bad. As I said, yes, you can type your expressions in your calculator, you get it. But be prepared for future things where you may not have the calculator. Okay? Now, as I talked about, and where some students, and I'm going to quote my uncle, my uncle is more of a hands on person. Um, he's retired Navy, he, he worked on uh, ships, either doing welding, plumbing, etc. He always says letters and numbers don't combine. And a lot of students feel that way. Nothing wrong with that feeling. Trust me, there are times with it, I dislike it. It happens. But an algebraic expression is you're going to see something like 5x plus 7 minus 12y. That's an algebraic expression because we are doing our operations and we're combining both numbers and and variables. So a numerical expression would just be all numbers, whereas algebraic means you're going to have operations tied to those numbers. Okay. Now, constants are any anytime you see a number without a variable attached. Okay. So if you see something like plus five or minus seven or minus a half, variables are letters x, y, z, w. You could also go into some Greek letters. Evaluate does not mean solve. Evaluate means simplify. Okay, So that's one thing I do want to hit hard because a lot of th students try to think, oh, evaluate just means solve it. No, it does not. And my pen is not wanting to work this evening, which is very odd. Usually it works. Oh, there it goes. Hey, we got it to work. So evaluate. Simplify. Okay. Do not solve. Okay. Now, a coefficient, so when you have like say 5x, the 5 is a coefficient, it's the number in front of your variable. Um, a term, term is separated by adding and subtracting. So when you see 5x plus 7y plus 12, that means there are three terms because it's separated by those additions. Okay? All right. Now, part of these order of operations, some things that are very common knowledge, um, to be closed in a field, you have to have closure, which means you have to be able to have, be able to add to get into the real numbers, and we're going to talk about real numbers, and multiply to get into the real. 
Communicative means you can switch the order and it's the same. And you can only communicate communicative between adding and multiplying. Associative is like your commutative, except associative is grouping. So you're associating, you're grouping. Identity means you want to get back to itself. So if you like here, it says a plus zero, that equals a. Okay, so we want to get back to a. Same idea for multiplying. If we multiply by one, we get back to its identity. Inverse means it gets down to zero in adding, or it gets to one in multiplication. Distributing means you see something parenthesis expression inside. And when we get into some other topics down the road, we're going to talk about foiling, which is an expanded distribution. Okay. And we're going to walk through exam examples of these, but these are just kind of just basic ideas. Okay. Cancellation. So this is where we're getting into kind of adding and subtracting, kind of moving things around to get things to look alike. So for here, for the additive cancellation, we would have to subtract this C from both sides to get it to look like A equal B, okay? Same thing here, remember to be one, we'd have to get these C's to cancel to be able to get them to be each other, okay? Then to be zero, well, remember to be zero in multiplication, we have to multiply by zero. So one of these numbers has to be zero. Okay, very simplistic topics. And like I said, we'll walk through a few examples later. Another thing, absolute values. Oops, let's slide this up. So remember, absolute is gonna be those parallel bars around a number. Remember, inside the absolute can be positive or negative. However, absolute always equals a positive so here the absolute value of a is always greater than and we'll talk about this too than or equal to zero okay because as this is talking about, absolute tells you how far a number is from zero. And in theory, distance cannot be negative. Okay? And so that's what this is talking about here. Properties of absolute. As I said, absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay? When we're multiplying inside, it's the same as multiplying the two pieces separately. Same idea with division, as long as b is not zero. And then in mathematics, we use the triangle identity many, 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 many times. It's saying if you're adding inside of your absolute, it is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b, okay? Now, with this, oops, let me write this down. Set of real numbers. So with here, what to think about with this? You need to simplify your expression down to be able to determine where it belongs, okay? So think of the real numbers as a bag of M&Ms, okay? It is broken up into different groups of types of numbers. All the M&Ms are the real numbers. However, if we make if we choose all the yellow M&Ms, and we say these are irrational numbers. This means we cannot write it as a fraction, okay? That's what our yellow M&Ms are. Whereas our blue M&Ms are numbers that we can write as a fraction. So these are um, re uh, repeating decimals, terminating decimals. Terminating means it stops. So like 0.25 is a terminating decimal. Uh, the repeating is like 0.333333 or 0 0.1789, 1789 all the way down. Okay. Now, inside of those blue M&Ms, we have what's called the integers. This is positive or negative whole numbers, including zero. Inside of the integers are whole numbers. So these are 0, 1, 2, 3 positive counting numbers. And then the natural are the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So on the rational numbers, it starts as natural, 
then we add whole, then we add integers, and then that makes all the rational of the blue, okay? Whereas irrational is just irrational, okay? And we'll talk about this as we go through, and it's it's actually not that bad, it's just the fun, fun nuisance of things. All right, inequality notation, okay? So, remember with here, whichever way the arrow part of your inequality points, that points to the smaller, whereas the open part, the mouth, is the bigger. So here, this is A is strictly less than B, whereas if we put the little equal to, that means A is either less than or it equals B, and then we can flip it around, okay? Interval notation. When we deal with our um, less thans or greater thans, we use, so for here, for interval notation, this is with our less than or greater thans. This is our less than or equal and greater than or equal for brackets. So parentheses use less than or greater than. Brackets use less than or equal or greater than or equal. Also, too, with the, with the parentheses, we're going to talk about plus or minus infinity, okay, because it does not stop as it shows down here, okay? So very simplistic. Now, what they show here is set building notation. Um, I use set building notation in certain theories. I don't use it with real numbers a lot of times. I use my interval notation. I use set notation when we're talking about sets of things. So as we're going to see in the next set of things, with set notation, what we're kind of looking at is take a look at this Venn diagram here. So here's where I would like to use set notation, trying to combine different sets together that don't that may not have things. So with here, the way we write set notation is it says we're going to define it. Typically, we're going to say, like outside, technically in mathematics, we say S is equal to the curly brace, and we'll put a variable or variables. That vertical line means such that the variables have a certain condition, be it that it's less than, greater than, or the intersection or the union of stuff. Okay. Now, we can have the empty set, which is either the zero, zero with a line through it, or we see an empty curly brace, okay? Now, union. Union means bring everything together, and you're going to see this denoted by a U, or the word or, okay? So we just combined our two sets or multiple sets together. Intersection means what they have in common. Where do they overlap at? Okay. And like I said, I prefer set notation when dealing in a different realm. When dealing with numbers, I personally don't prefer it. That's, but that's just my research area of interest. Okay. So like I said, let's look at a few things. Let's look at a few of these. Okay. So example. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Draw. Thank you. All right, example, determine what kind of real number is each expression, okay? So with here, first example, 7 minus 12 squared plus 5 plus pi. Okay. Now, with this one, so with here, what you have to do with this is for here, with this word expression, this means simplify. Also, too, with this, with with some of these, it may not say expression. It may just say determine what kind of number this number is. But that still means simplify. Break it down to as far as it can go. Okay? Well, with here, I automatically know this is irrational. And you're probably going, how the heck does he know this? It's okay. 
if you type in your calculator pi, which it is on your calculator, if I remember right, it's second and the caret symbol that gets you your pi, um, or it has specifically the pi button. But this, this is the Greek symbol pi, and this is 3.1419265, da 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 Even though your calculator stops, it actually doesn't. Um, one study, and this is years old now, um, uh, researchers had calculated it up to roughly 500 trillion digits, um, or no, 500 billion digits, it was half a trillion, 500 billion digits, they were trying to see does it stop, but it didn't. So right here, this tells us this is irrational because of that pi, okay, and that's it. All right, so that one's very simple. So whenever you type this into your calculator, you're just gonna see this number continuing. But right here, we can go, oh, pi, boom, it's irrational. Now, number two, square root seven minus five. All right, so this is where we use our PEMDAS. So we do the inside because this is grouping. So this is square root of two. Well, if you type square root of 2 in, it's just going to be a decimal that keeps continuing. It's one point blah, 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 blah. And you can look at it and see. So if we do square root of 2, we see that. It just keeps going. It does not stop. This is also irrational. Okay. So it is a real number, but it's just irrational. Now. Let's take a look at, let's take kind of up here. Let's go 7 minus 12 squared plus 5. Okay. All right. So let's simplify this down. So follow your order of operations. There is no parentheses, but there is an exponent. So 7 minus 144 plus 5. And then this is negative 137 plus 5, which is negative 132. All right. So we see it's a whole number, but it's negative. This is an integer because it's a negative whole number. And it's also a rational because it can be written as a fraction. Negative 132 is the same as negative 132 over one. So it is rational, okay? And then one last one for friends and giggles. 0.1717 repeating. Okay. So we're just going to see this. This is just strictly rational because it is a decimal that repeats, which means it can be written as a fraction. And that's it. Okay. With a lot of these, you have to follow that PEMDAS. Okay. And if you hear my one of my foster animals, well, right now we got a foster puppy. Um, he is three years old. His name is Marty. He is coming to us. He was chained up outside and abused, and we're helping acclimate him. So if he starts barking or jumps in out of nowhere, my apologies for that. All right. So now, let's look at an expression here, an algebraic expression. So we got 5x plus 7y plus 20 plus 10 pi, okay? So with this, this expression has one, two, three, four terms. This is a four term expression, okay? Five is the coefficient coefficient for x. Seven is the coefficient for y. So that means 20 and 10 pi are constants because they don't have variables. Okay? Very simplistic. And you can simplify this down. 
So now one other thing, let's take a look at a distribution here right quick. So let's say I gave you seven parentheses, seven X plus 12 minus 12 Y. Okay, so with here, to simplify this, you would distribute seven, just like this, seven to seven X, 12, seven to 12. And we multiply, so this is 49 X plus 84 minus 12y. We can't simplify any further because nothing looks alike, so we just leave it alone. Okay? Now, whoops, I did not want to do that, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Let's say A is the set of 1, 2, 7, negative 5, 3 fourths, and pi. B is negative 7, negative 2, 0, 3, pi, and 5. C is 1, 6, and 9. Okay? So now, your question could be, define Z as the set X such that X is A union C, okay? So remember, union means merge them together. Now here, since A and C both have a 1, we only have to write it once. So Z equals 1, 2, 6, 7, 9, negative 5, 3 fourths, and pi. Boom. Intersection. Now if I were to ask what's the intersection of A and C, it would only be 1. If I asked the intersection of B and C, it would be the empty set. It would be the null set because they don't have anything in common. Okay? And that is this chapter. We could also list, like I said, with the inequality, it may say, okay, X is less, may have you say, okay, write out X less than 5. So you would do X, the less than symbol, 5. Okay? And that is section 1.1. I hope y'all have fun with it.